Hey guys, this is continuing straight on from the previous video where I'm going to be looking at the relationship between the total stress, the effective stress, the excess pore water pressure and settlement. So in the previous video we saw how over time we get settlement, a change in pore water pressure, the, the total stress remains the same and we get a change in the effective stress. So we're going to plot all that now to get a better understanding of what go, what's going on. So first graph we're going to draw is time against the total stress. Now this total stress is not changing at time, at any time. So for example, we've applied 20 kPa here, our system is experiencing 80 kPa. Now although pore water pressure is escaping, the system is still experiencing 80 kPa due to this induced load of 20 kPa in addition to the initial condition. So the 80 kPa is inside this system that system does not change. Okay, the effect, the total stress inside here of 80 kPa is not changing. So that remains the same. The total stress versus time. The total stress, sorry, the time against excess pore water pressure. So this is not pore water pressure, it's excess pore water pressure. Pore water. So excess pore water pressure. So as you can see, at a particular time we get a maximum pore water pressure, we had it at 30 kPa, which then reduces as the water is allowed to escape, and it takes us back to our initial pore water pressure we had at the beginning. So the excess pore water pressure goes to zero. So we, have, we, we still have a pore water pressure in the system, but the excess pore water pressure has gone to zero as all the excess pore water pressure has escaped. So if we were to graph this diagram, it would look something like this. So as time goes on, the water escapes and the excess pore water pressure reduces. The next graph we can draw is the effective stress against time. So effective stress.